My name's Randy Graber. I'm the owner and president of Open Range RV Company. Uh, we're here today to take you through our plant and show you how we build an open range. We're going to start uh, on our open range factory tour. We're going to start here in the uh, aluminum welding plant and move on through. But uh, you can see here, um, aluminum tubing comes in raw over here. We've got some jigs set up over here where we're starting to weld some uh, uh, rear walls up. Every part is marked for every particular unit uh, so that we uh, ensure precise wall build, everything's in square, and matched up, every piece is matched up to each unit. Here you can see some uh, side walls that have been welded up. You got your door side wall and the off door side wall. Some of these walls here are travel trailer walls, which is a lower profile, and then you can see some fifth wall walls also um, in there that are a little bit taller. <clears throat> You also notice too, um, we use a, we use a heavy two by three gauge headers around all of our slide out openings. This is a basically a skeleton right now. Um, you'll notice too that all the welds are double double welds on each side of the tubes. Give it that extra strength. Double welds, not a single weld on the, on the tubes there. And I assume that provides additional strength. More, much more strength. Yes out of a light product when you laminate because you don't have the conventional built 16-inch uh, on center uh, construction with heavy, heavy decking. But it builds a uh, laminating uh, will allow us to build a very strong but very light floor and walls also. Here you can see them stuffing the walls right over here on this table. Those will be stacked and then we'll head over to the lamination building where we'll laminate up these walls. In the lamination process, there's quite a few that do this type of laminating, but we, we take that lamination to the next level. We laminate all of our rear walls, all of our front walls, all of our slide out boxes, all of our slide out roofs. A lot of companies will cheat and only laminate their side walls and then they freehang their uh, slide out boxes, they freehang their slide out walls. Now we're inside the lamination plant and this is a climate control built station. You can tell the difference. We just went from high heat and humidity into a plant that's uh, basically air conditioned at 72 degrees. So we keep that temperature consistent, we keep the humidity down, and it gives us a much better product without having uh, lamination and delamination issues with the high humidity. That wall's being pinched. It's going to lay on a flatbed trailer for 24 hours to cure. So that we know we've got a very good cure before we start flexing or moving the panels around. But after 24 hours, and then we're going to take it to another station where they uh, will route the, out the windows and the perimeter of the wall. Now we'll start back here in the floor department with our frame, our main frame. This is an I-beam frame. It's all powder coated, gives you a very tough, durable, painted surface. As far as holding tanks go, we don't use ABS tanks. They're very brittle and crack, and uh, they just don't seal up around fittings as well uh, as a rotomold tank, which is a very tough, durable tank. You could run over that with a semi. You won't break it. You might squash it, but it's not going to shatter. The other nice thing about this tank is that all the fittings in this tank are spun in by heat, so they're melted right into the material. There's no glue involved. It's all heat uh, in a melt process, which gives you a very secure fitting, uh, much less chance of a leak on a fitting. And then as we go back here, you'll see the fresh water tank. Same thing again. It's a roto-molded tank. All the fittings are spun in again. And um, on these tanks too, uh, you'll you'll see a little a reservoir at the bottom of that tank so that the low point of the tank goes into the reservoir so all the water does drain out. The tires are filled with nitrogen instead of just regular air. Uh, the nitrogen will help that tire run cooler and less chance to lose air pressure. So less chance of blowouts uh, in your travels. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, the floor before the decking goes on. You'll see that our floors are all aluminum and they're all double welded on each side of the tubes for extra strength. And we're, we're uh, running 12 inches on center with our floor joists where our competitors typically run 16 inches on center. And we also run uh, every four foot perpendicular floor braces too that the uh, competitors do not run. In this floor, you're gonna have your fiberglass insulation, your calculated R reflective foil at R38 calculation, and then your Darko underneath that to protect from moisture. Then on top of that, we're gonna put plywood decking on top of this floor. We don't use OSB. Most of our competitors are using chipboard or OSB board for their flooring, which is very heavy. And open range is about more room, less weight. So we take out weight anywhere we can and not compromising structural integrity. So plywood versus chipboard. Okay, now we've got past the floor construction and now we're, we want to talk about the laminates that go on the floor. One thing we use is what we call bow floor instead of linoleum. Uh, the nice thing about bow floor is it's designed for RVs. It's designed to be stretched. You don't have to glue it down. It allows it to expand and contract in the cold and heat, what you get in RVs, not like a home. Uh, it will not crack in cold climate like some of our competitors do. Uh, and also the back, there is no paper on this linoleum bow floor. So it's not going to rot or mildew or stain through if you get any moisture to it. It's very moisture resistant. We not only do a pad, but we do a residential rebound pad. This is not regular RV padding. We use residential rebound padding. Most RVs use just a cheap foam, which will break down very quickly, and then it also breaks down your carpet very quickly. So we use a very durable pad so that your carpet will hold up for many, many years of camping enjoyment. Okay, once we get the flooring down, then we're gonna start setting our interior cabinets in the coach. And uh, we start out with a wood core product, which you can see it's a real wood product uh, and not a uh, press board or particle board. This is a face frame of a cat front of a uh, linen cabinet, but if you'll notice on the back side that all of our joints are, are screwed together, not stapled together like some of our competitors do. So that cabinet is gonna hold up and not wiggle loose from a, a just having a staple pulling it together. Uh, if you take our open range, the residentials, we're using a dovetail drawer box, just like a residential home has with the heavy duty 100 pound ball bearing roller guides. All solid wood uh, drawer fronts and cabinet door fronts. You also see we use all concealed residential hinges. No exposed hinge. It's a pocket, residential pocket hinge. Gives you a very clean residential look in our coach. We don't cut corners on that. The other thing you'll see is any drawer this size or bigger is going to have a brace down the middle underneath that you don't normally see. Rather than have to compromise and go with a smaller trailer because their truck won't tow it, they can tow more. They really want, but they can't pull it because of the weight. We went to the JT Strong Arms. We were the first to go to this OEMs to go to a JT Strong Arm and get rid of that rocking motion because look, if you don't have a stabilizer, you can go up to every fifth wheel, I don't care what it is, a travel trailer fifth wheel, and they're gonna rock. Now, with a JT Strong Arms on our system, locked down, you've tightened that up. So you got two state JT Strong Arms on the rear of the coach and four on the front. So you eliminate that rocking motion in the front and the back of the coach from side to side and front to back. What we've done is we went to two 40-pound two bottles on each side. Four 40-pound, four 20-pound bottles gives you 80 pounds of FP. But this bottle is much easier to carry. And you can go to a convenience store and get an exchange. You cannot do that with a 30 or 40 pound bottle. You've got to go to an LP fill uh, station to get that bottle filled. So another convenience for the consumer. Okay, so your sewer hose uh, stays in there all the time. And uh, what you do here is you drop this down. Your hose will hook up right to the termination here. And then you'll open this door and you have a telescopic sewer hose support. So you can pivot this 180 degrees wherever your uh, dump station is 
and you have a built-in support so you don't have to carry the, uh, the scissor ladders to support your sewer hose to get a drain. So just another exclusive feature from Open Range. Appliances in our coach, we start with an Atwood water heater. And the reason we use an Atwood water heater is it's less weight. It's an aluminum tank. Our competitor uses a steel tank, so it's much heavier. The other nice thing about this water heater, there is no anode rod in this tank, so you don't ever have to worry about replacing an anode rod uh, with this tank, no maintenance on that. It's gas and electric, so you can run it on either one, or you can run them both same times. If you run them both same time, you can uh, take a 12-gallon water heater and you can push it to uh, recovering 17 gallons every 40 minutes if you're running the electric and the gas. We seal it with a 3M flashing tape. And this 3M flashing tape, um, very durable stuff. We do an experiment where we seal a cup of water with this and put a screw through it, turn the cup upside down, and the water will not penetrate through this 3M flashing tape. So that starts, that's where we start. We seal the screws, we seal the corner, and then we come back with our corner molding with a butyl tape, <clears throat> and that corner molding goes on there with a butyl tape. We put our screw through that, that butyl sinks into the screw and seals that screw thread. And then once we get that done, then we come back and we also caulk with GeoSil the edges of that corner molding. So you got three seals to stop water from getting in that corner. On this box, that you have a dam. This dam is between those two rubber flaps. So if water gets behind the first flap, it hits the dam before it can ever get to the third flap. So we're going to stop that water. The other thing is we put a dam this, at the top of the roof. The roof is sloped three quarters of an inch. So if water gets on your slide roof, it's going to flow away from the coach, not up against the coach. I can't emphasize enough about more room, less weight. Our coaches are 100 inches wide. Our slides are deeper. Our slides are 42 inches deep. We have opposing 42 inch slides in some of our coaches, 15 feet wide span inside a coach. You can't do that with all slide outs, but with the Norco system, you can. The other thing is we're taking weight out. Again, with this system, we're taking two, 300 pounds of weight out per slide out because we don't have the heavy rack and pinion tubes underneath the slide boxes going through a big, heavy frame where they have to cut a hole through in the main frame. We can keep our frame weights lighter because we're not boring big holes in our frame.